medications that cause osteoporosis that you need to know. Uh, any drug which is used to treat um, epilepsy, they induce the liver to break down vitamin D. And then any drug which inhibits estrogen also causes uh, osteoporosis. GnRH agonists, if you give the patients GnRH, it is going to reduce testosterone. And testosterone is what's converted to estrogen in men, which goes and forms the bone. Okay, then PPIs. Uh, when you give them drugs that inhibit the gastric acid secretion, it causes low calcium absorption. And glucocorticoids, it's a very, uh, it's a, it's a well-known drug that causes low bone formation. Then there are three main drugs which causes drug-induced lupus. <clears throat> okay, procainamide, hydralazine, and isoniazid. Isoniazid used to treat uh, TB. And the symptoms are abrupt onset fever, arthralgia, serositis. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention uh, the uh, pleura, the lung and the heart pleura are always uh, are affected in SLE. I will add that to the, uh, that image. How do you differentiate between drug-induced lupus and normal lupus? They don't have a rash and does not involve kidneys. SLE, anti-Smith, is highly specific. Then low estrogen effects, you guys can go through this. These were done. Antiphospholipid syndrome, blood clots, increased PTT. Neonatal, lupus, SLE, Sjogren's. Scleroderma, uh, we did this. And I have put all the autoantibodies that you need to know, anticentromere, anti it's limited scleroderma, stuff like that. I have put all the autoantibodies you need to know. You guys can go through this. Uh, just try the first question. These are small questions. So, uh, yeah. Send the answers in the chat. I will wait for everyone to do it because these are short. Yeah, everyone got the answer. The answer is omeprazole. Okay. Early osteoporosis, typically one of those drugs. The second one. One person got the answer, others. Yes, two people got it. Just try. Yes, Tusha, waiting for you. What do you think? First answer that comes to your head, just quickly send it. Yes, you are correct. Uh, this is osteoporosis, early onset osteoporosis. When you get compression fractures, and uh, this patient is on oral prednisone, corticosteroid, medication adverse effect. 
Third one. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone got it. Eisen acid. Antihistone, antinuclear antibodies. This is a typical case of uh, drug induced lupus. Okay. A 61 year old man presents with sudden onset pain and swelling in the ankle. That uh, what sounds for them? This is a bit tricky because, in the sense, read it properly. Yes, one person got it correct, uh, like one person sent and it's correct. Yes, Shashank, correct. Yes, Pratika, Tusha. Why D? Because xanthine oxidase inhibitors are used for long term management. Mycophenolate. Yeah. Oh, uh, you're talking about this question, right, Tushar? Yeah, yeah, fourth one. Why not glucocorticoids? Uh, you don't, uh, you try to avoid giving patients glucocorticoids in long term management. If you can avoid it, you avoid it. You go for the drugs, and the answer for this one is uh, allopurinol, xanthine oxidase inhibitors. I talked about. Yeah. But go to the one on gout. Yeah. You don't give uh, patients um, corticosteroids if you can avoid it. It's very powerful, but it's going to destroy your it's going to destroy a lot of systems uh, next question fill in the blanks also Okay, uh, are in the correct. Quickly go to that image if you are not sure. No, it's not. Just go to that image quickly because the most important factor for monitoring disease progression. Yes, Kritik, I'm waiting for you. What's the answer? So I hope you guys get it. The answer is A. Uh, the way you monitor disease progression is by checking the degree of chest expansion. Okay. Exactly. Uh, you need to check the lung expansion to uh, make sure uh, you know if the patient is 
uh, going into a terminal stage. I think recently there was a very famous TikTok about this Frost family who has a child with a condition. Uh, it's a genetic condition where their neuronal systems, the motor neurons don't work. And yeah, for that condition also, I will send that, uh, that video. Uh, they check the chest expansion because once the chest is not expanding properly, then they know it's, uh, the person is going to die very soon. Like that child was told that the parents of that child was told that the child is going to die within a few weeks or days uh, after doing a chest expansion test. What's the answer for the next one? Let me find the video. Yes, two people got it correct. Wait, didn't I do that? Yeah, I did. I think I forgot to mention it. Guys, send me the answer. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I will go back to the question. So at least send me one more once and I will explain that. What's the diagnosis here? Dermatomyositis. Progressive muscle weakness, difficulty climbing stairs. Uh, that's also a common statement. And then you get these things. And okay. Whenever you see this statement, what should your mind go to? Like whenever you see this statement, unintentional weight loss, just one of the first things that you should think of is cancer. Cancer. Yeah. Uh, okay. Ovarian adenocarcinoma. So uh, dermatomyositis is uh, both of these. Okay is associated with ovarian adenocarcinoma, but because of the skin involvement, it's dermatomyositis, okay? Seventh one. Yes. Not in the you are correct. Uh, Shashank, you are correct. What's the diagnosis? HS. HS disease of bone. Yes. 
Okay, so what's the answer? Initial phase of this patient's disorder. So what has happened here is that the patient complains of pain in the left side of the ear. There is accelerated bone remodeling and elevated ALP. Who is the initiator? Who is the start, uh, starter for this whole mess? Which cell type? Yeah. Osteoclasts. Okay. They start to destroy the bone and the osteoblasts have to come and uh, try to fix it. The lytic phase becomes the sclerotic phase later. Okay. Uh, next question. Okay, you cannot get this one wrong. Yes, that is there. For which question? No, check again. Check again. I underlined something very important. Yes, critical. Yes. Shashank, what's your answer? Yeah, reactive arthritis. Okay. Uh, patient comes with an infection, gets treated, comes back two weeks later with conjunctivitis, knee pain, vesicular ash, uh, typical of reactive arthritis. Okay. Uh, Tabis dorsalis is tertiary syphilis. Next question. Yes. Those who sent the answer for this one, uh, you are correct. Others? Yes. Uh, check again, because uh, Shashank, just check again, because uh, what's the diagnosis here? It's rheumatoid arthritis, and they have this rheumatoid factor, which is an IgM molecule. Uh, which goes against the IgG molecule, the FC portion. Okay, what's the next one? Uh, the answer. Yeah. Yes, start in there. Yes, Shashank. Kritika.
uh, check again. Okay, I will explain this one. So, systemic sclerosis, that is idiopathic, so due to some reason, it goes and there's going to be fibrosis everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Yes, you are correct. And one of the most damaging, most common locations is interstitial lung disease. This is deadly. Like uh, if you have interstitial lung disease with time, you just, uh, you can't breathe. You die. I sent uh, the video to the group. Basically, uh, both those conditions, uh, ankylosing spondylitis, interstitial lung disease, those are for adults, but basically they die because they can't breathe. So, next question. One more answer. Yes, those who send the answers, you are correct. Here's a hint. Okay, I'm gonna explain this one. So, morning stiffness, and that's common for most uh, joint disorders and activity-related joint pains. When it's activity-related joint pains, let's go all the way to the top. Activity related, when they are dancing, when they're moving, it hurts. But when they rest, it's resolved. The answer is osteoarthritis. Next one. Yeah, those who sent for the next one, yes, you are correct. Tushar, Shashank, correct. 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 Yeah, so uh, the answer is non Hodgkin's lymphoma. This is Sjogren's. Okay. A patient suffers from recurrent non fitting edema. Next question. The answer of the hands. She has to wear warm gloves. What is this part of? Uh, sorry, I couldn't hear. Crest. Uh, Reynolds phenomena. Which one? Is it for diffuse scleroderma or local, localized scleroderma? Check again. Right. 
stickers, those who sent me to Akara. Remember, I told you about the color thing. If I used purple and I talked about purple, then it's for uh, that condition. But if I use this pink color, it's for both. So what's the answer? The answer is localized scleroderma. Okay, these patients have a face and fingers, the hand, which is affected. Next question. Guys, I leave this question for a minute. Uh, to check something here. Yeah, I forgot to mention one point. Uh, you are correct. Uh, Kritika, you are correct with this question. I forgot to mention something. I will add that to the that note. So the answer for this is A, okay? Decreased complement levels because those are being consumed. I forgot to add C3, C2, C3. In SLE, what happens is there's going to be consumption of, okay, so these autoantibodies goes and deposits. And whenever these antibodies go and deposit, the complement system is going to get activated. The C3, it's going to be broken down into C3A, C3B. Okay, and that means these levels will go down. There's also, Consumption of the anti-inflammatory ones, which C1Q, which leads to a total uh, decrease in complements because they are being used up. Okay, I forgot to mention C3. So this is, I assume everyone got the diagnosis correct, SLE. And the answer for this is decrease C3, C4. This is for rheumatoid arthritis. Anti Mitochondrial, you can see here, it's for cholangitis, primary biliary cholangitis, okay? Uh, final question. Yeah, if, yeah. What's the answer? Uh, those who send the answer, you guys are correct. Shashank Tarinda, you guys are correct. Just quickly go to that back pain image. It should come back within a second. Quickly go to that back pain image. 
uh, use your phone or something. Yes, Kritika, waiting for you. Okay, I'm gonna explain it because the meeting is about when neoplastic. Okay, constant progressive back pain that does not relieve with position change and is especially bad at night. If you go here, you will see where's my back pain. Constant pain worse at night, not responsive to position change. So that is the 